So like I just said, this week's starting beef is about the OBJ trade. And we all know the news that by now. Odell Beckham Jr. has been traded from the Giants to the Browns. The Giants have received a first, a third, and Jabril Peppers. When this trade happened, it created a mass frenzy in the NFL world. Giants fans were put into shock, then into rage, then into grief. The rest of the sports nation was laughing at us, telling us that we've been fleeced, that we were stupid. It was the trade that rocked the NFL world. Many people are upset, confused, unsure, asking, why did this happen? What does it mean on the Giants' end? Did we get robbed? It almost feels like a broken relationship with the Giants and their fans. And for tonight, I want to be a friend to the Giants fans. I'm a huge Giant fan. And what do I mean by being a friend? Is in a breakup, there are two types of friends. There's ones that tell you what you want to hear. That the Giants are bad, they're pathetic, they're stupid, they got fleeced. Or you can have a good friend. And a good friend's going to tell you the truth. And the truth hurts. The truth might not be what you want to hear. And it may make you uncomfortable. But that's what I'm going to try to be for all of you. So as I said before, you might be asking, why did this happen? And many of you probably listened to Dave Gettleman on Mike Francesa's show today. And he said it was for football reasons. I'm here to tell you, that's not completely true. The Giants wanted out of the Odell Beckham show. They believed he was a distraction. And that it could possibly get worse. There are multiple reports about it. So when Dave says it's all about football, he's really just trying to blow out that distraction thing out of the way. But let's not kid ourselves. Odell is not a cancer. He is a great guy. Teammates love him. And he has become one of the most polarizing players in the game. He's got the look. He's got the skill. He's got the personality. He's reached a status that most football players can't. He's practically a basketball player. With his type of recognition. But don't kid yourself. Odell loves the attention. He is an Instagram star. He's a Twitter star. He is an entertainer. He puts on a show. But just because your teammates like you. Doesn't mean you aren't a distraction. It doesn't mean. He didn't have moments. He took the air out of the room. The question you might be asking is. Well if that's true Frank. Why did they sign him? And my answer is simple. They tried to make it work. They knew of the talent of Odell Beckham. And they wanted to make it work. It was reported by Jay Glazer, the man who predicted this months ago, that the front office wanted to trade Odell Beckham before the big signing. But Coach Shermer, ownership, said no. They wanted to see if they could make it work. So they signed him to a record-breaking contract. And then what happened? A few weeks later, before the ink could completely dry, came the interview with ESPN and Josina Anderson. He did not tell the Giants about this interview. And in that interview, he threw his QB under the bus, his coaching staff under the bus. And normally, he would survive this. I didn't think this was the nail to his coffin. We all know the list of other things. The sideline tantrums, the IVs, some of his comments. But what really stuck out in this interview wasn't that he threw Eli under the bus or his coaching staff under the bus. What I really believe was the final nail is when he was asked if he was happy in New York. And he said, I don't know. That's a tough question. He proceeded to talk about the sun in L.A. This was not a spit on the quarterback or the coach. This was a spit in their ownership's face. You could survive throwing a co-worker under the bus. Maybe even a supervisor. But when you spin the face of the boss, it's hard to come back from that. Many of you praised him for being real, being honest. But ask yourself this. If any of you ever have done that, or tried to do it in a public setting about where you work, I can assure you, You better be packing your bags that night. 
So they signed him because they wanted to make it work. And this interview, followed by other incidents, left the door open to the Giants thinking this. We have a lot of holes in our team. And to get assets to fill those holes, you have to give something up. And Odell is a tremendous athlete that can give you those assets. Now you'll be asking yourself, did the Giants get proper value? As I mentioned before, they got a first, a third, and a starting safety. Just look at recent history. The Cooper trade to Dallas was for a first. Demarius Thomas was for a fourth. Antonio Brown was for a third and a fifth. Jarvis Landry was for a fourth and a seventh. Did they get proper value? Probably not, but when you're trading a player, you never get proper value. What you're looking for is 80 cents on the dollar instead of 50. And I believe the Giants did. We have seen star receivers get traded before. Randy Moss got traded from the Vikings in his prime. The last question you'd be asking yourself is what's next for the Giants? Dave Gettleman's made it clear he wants to change the philosophy to a run-first offense. And I know this comment caused the PFF wizards and the fantasy experts to laugh and say we are going back into the Stone Age. But there is some truth to the run-first method. Four out of the top five rushing teams in the NFL made the playoffs, including our two Super Bowl teams. But it's not just those with rushing yards. It's about attempts as well. Eight of the top ten rush attempts per game teams made the playoffs. Eight of the top ten. The focus on running is an important aspect. When the weather gets bad, when the defenses get better, you have to be able to do it. On the flip side... Three of the top 10 passing attempts teams, those who had the most pass attempts, made the playoffs. Three of 10. Running the ball helps the pass with play action. It controls the clock, which helps your defense. This is not some Stone Age mythology. This is still a reality in football. What it also did was made Saquon Barkley the face of the franchise. And it opened the door for the next franchise quarterback to share in that spotlight and not to be overshadowed. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say the Giants are not at fault. The marriage with Odell has ended, and it could be good for both parties. Odell can start a new... He could start a new on a new team with a new fan base with maybe less scrutiny in the media. And all the attention that Odell gets, maybe it's not fair how he gets scrutinized for every little thing. But LeBron gets that same attention. That's the issue. That's the double-edged sword about being an icon like LeBron that I believe Odell is reaching. Not saying he has the equal success of LeBron, but I'm talking about marketability, the attention he gets. It may not be fair, all the little details that people scrutinize you for. But that comes with the territory. LeBron faces it. And for the Giants, it's a way to start anew, to create a new identity. And I know we have seen star receivers get traded before. It wasn't ugly like A.B. in the Steelers, or Randy Moss in the Vikings, or T.O. in the Eagles. But feelings fade sometimes, and both sides were at fault. And for us Giant fans, I know you have gone through your five stages of grief. But it's time to reach the final stage, acceptance. And by doing that, you should stop vigorously slamming your own players. Store away the number 13 jerseys. And some of you threatening to leave, it's time to get a grip. I know it hurts now, but deep down inside, you know, it was probably for the best.